Sonic X Comic Issue 11. Fortunately, Knuckles actually explains why he's blaming Sonic for Eggman's trap. Unlike Fleetway, Knuckles, he just blames Sonic for everything. If Sonic hadn't used Chaos Control against Eggman on Mobius, they wouldn't have been taken to Earth for no reason at all. Since when does Sonic use Chaos Control before even meeting Shadow? He really could have used Shadow in that situation. He would have known how to use it. I think Sonic might have needed to see him use it first to know how to warp with it, but I don't think it should be that hard to use. Just imagine what you want to happen. Why would that create a dimensional rift? Did Sonic intentionally want to send Eggman to another world, sealing him away like at the end of Sad EM? And somehow it just so happened that he and his friends got caught in a portal because they expanded out of control, like the Zone of Silence portal? That actually explains everything. It shouldn't be a portal that can suck the wrong people up. But he's even an anti-hero, so I can imagine him being selfish and irresponsible enough to just make Eggman some other planet's problem. So I'm sure that wasn't the canon explanation, because that would have made sense, instead of them all just going to Earth for no reason because we need to start an anime. Knuckles has a good reason to be mad at Sonic for getting his friends mixed up in Eggman's battles, risking their lives. And you can still be mad at someone when you know they have to do something because they're trying to do what's right. After Professor Chuck says the Master Emerald is still on Earth, so Eggman must have taken it to justify this giant amount of padding. Wait, what? Knuckles was knocked down by a spike of Eggman's Eggmobile earlier. And I thought the only reason he wasn't injured was because he had rings. Nope. That's stupid. And perhaps the stupidest thing about this adaptation is that the rings of Sonic X are now firmly established to not protect you from getting hurt. Which is really stupid. Because there's so many times when the hero should logically get injured. And the only logical explanation for that not happening is that we can assume they have rings in their auras protecting them. So rings aren't just great in the games, they're also great for stories because they fill in a massive fundamental plot hole. Not in Sonic X! I like that Amy kicks the Eggmobile. She says she can't feel her hammer anymore. Again. I like that the transition to Labyrinth Zone is that the floor breaks apart. Too bad when they got to Spring Earth Zone, which was left out of the Death Egg Madness. Nothing happened there that would have only been able to happen there. In fact, when we saw it in Fleetway, it was better, because they actually took advantage of the, the U-shaped things. I like that Rouge joke that she's engaged to Knuckles because he gave her a ring. It's finally explained what's going on. Yes! They're in a virtual reality world! I actually guessed that earlier, but I didn't think that would actually be true. I thought it would just be that they were in another dimension. And best of all, it's powered by the Master Emerald! Oh my god, this is almost too good to be true. Take that, Flynn! That makes so much more sense in the Death Egg Madness. He didn't rewrite the entire universe on a whim with one measly Chaos Emerald. He's using the Master Emerald, being ultra competent by stealing it for a change. And it's an unintentional reference to Sonic Underground's finale, where they got sucked into a video game. And it was actually original there. Sonic couldn't run, he was being chased by a deadly airship, so it made sense to be that dangerous. I really can't believe that this is actually the explanation. This is a, this is very good. Eggman explains that by the time they reach the final level of the trap, the trap will explode from overloading energy. For some reason, why can't it just explode right away? And while even Bokun suggests blowing them up instead, Eggman just says that the controller gives them hand-to-eye coordination. What is he controlling? Not the Sonic characters, because they would have immediately been forced to run to death traps and die. Another reason them being sucked into a video game is the premise that falls apart. It just doesn't make sense for it to be possible for them when Eggman has complete control over this reality. Why doesn't Rouge just fly and carry one of them like Knuckles instead of them relying on seesaws entirely? Tail says he's been trapped here for four hours, and he never bothered to progress in the level. That's another reason this plot falls apart. The character Sonic reunites with wouldn't have just stood still, they would have kept progressing and got sent to the moon even faster. Even Sonic Generations made more sense, because at least there the characters were paralyzed in time. And in Sonic Advance 2, the, the characters were kidnapped. It's kind of good in theory to give Rouge a flaw by making her flirt with Knuckles unsuccessfully and make a fool out of herself for a change. But on the other hand, they're turning her into Amy Rose. But for Knuckles. Penders didn't do that. She flirts more than Amy does with Sonic, and that makes more sense, actually, since she's the flirtatious one, after all. Oh, so they have to break cream and vanilla out of a cage. 
James presses a button that sucks the hero's way to the final zone, and everyone starts attacking the Geographer Robotnik Sprite in the tube. Chuck discovers the Master Emerald and the heroes, who are all connected to the virtual reality machine, and it easily frees them because Eggman didn't think to get the building any security. How could he forget about Chuck, a fellow do-anything scientist? I love that he was the Chekhov's gunman, being the one thing Eggman forgot all about because he's not someone he's been fighting all his life. But come on, he couldn't have fired ray guns at some security robots? That would have been better for an action series. That was anticlimactic. The heroes didn't earn getting out of that simulation. Everyone's freed, Sonic picks up the Master Emerald, and they take off anticlimactically. And Echo and Boko ask if they'll have to rebuild the lab again. Apparently, the heroes were in that lab, which has no lab equipment at all. It is a lot smarter of this Eggman to make the idiotic robot sidekick stick to rebuilding the lab over building ineffective traps for Sonic. Why bother making them talk then, other than him being lonely? I guess that's it. This story was by Joe Edkin, and was nothing but filler, since once again, while the heroes were trapped in Sonic 1, nothing was done with the concept. They fight badniks. Knuckles could have called Sonic out anywhere. They never should have implied that Rings and Sonic X don't normally protect people from getting hurt. And Eggman having a controller was just confusing, since when we see the screen, classic Eggman isn't on it, so he's not controlling him. Logically, he should just get the heroes killed if he's controlling them. If he's making the levels, then why doesn't he just make them ROM hack impossible? On the bright side, the premise and ending actually make sense compared to the Death Egg Madness. They're not in a recreation of reality, out of nowhere. They're in a virtual reality simulation powered by the Master Emerald. Perfect! But even then, it makes no sense that they don't get blown up right away and that the video game wouldn't be impossibly hard. And Eggman has the stupidest excuse for it all. What was the point of this? Anyone can make a fan fiction about what Sonic would say when it's going through Sonic 1. It's literally the laziest story I've ever seen in my entire life. And I hate to think that game purists would absolutely eat it up just because it's about a game, because we all know that the games have Oscar-winning stories. Remember Sonic 06? They should have never met up with Sonic and spent most of their time waiting impatiently at the final zone. Still better than Eggman of all people reset in reality, though. That was just impossibly dumb. And while Chuck getting to free the heroes was anticlimactic, it made sense that he tracked down the signal of the Master Emerald with an invention. I just wish he had to destroy some security robots to do it so it would be more badass of him and not make Eggman look like a complete idiot who forgot to have security. So this ending still beats the shit out of the Death Egg Madness' ending, where Sonic uses Chaos Control to go back in time before reality was rewritten, just because he's Super Sonic, since when could Super Sonic do that? And then I was expected to believe the heroes are immediately sent back to Death Egg Madness seconds later anyways. Sonic didn't do anything to clearly prevent Eggman from doing that all again. Here, the heroes get freed, and the tower gets launched to the moon without them. But it still makes me sad to say that the Death Egg Madness was a much more engaging story. And where's the Chaotix in this story? They didn't get sucked into the game, so I guess they really did return to Mobius. I would say that's a missed opportunity, but they wouldn't have contributed anything to the story arc other than being more people getting rings and levels. I couldn't be more apathetic to the story arc. It was just a whole lot of nothing. 